So good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Trends in Technology-Driven Education webinar. My name is Yumon. And my name is Chalutai. And we are honored to be your MC for this exciting webinar. So this webinar is organized by the first year students of Masters in Educational Administration and Leadership at Zamsha University. We have dedicated our time and effort to host an online seminar that brings our attendees the latest insight and trends in technology-driven education. Ladies and gentlemen, to officially start our seminar, we would like to welcome the Dean of Graduate School of Human Sciences, Dr. Chayada Tanavisud, to deliver the welcome speech to our distinguished keynote speakers. Thank you, Yumon. Good evening, the distinguished guest speakers, the program director, faculty members, and students. On behalf of uh, the Graduate School of Human Sciences, and on my personal behalf, I would like to formally welcome Professor Dr. Jintawi Klai Sang and Associate Professor Dr. Thanatnut Chatprapa Ratana. The objective of this webinar is to discover new practices to enrich their teaching and learning and provide opportunities for students and faculty members to learn and share ideas with scholars. We are extremely thankful to the two speakers. Professor Dr. Jintawi, she has immense experience in research, in innovation and technology. Also, Associate Professor Dr. Thanatnut from Sukhothai Thamathirat, Open University. The topic for today's webinar is on new trend in technology, driven education. We hope and wish that this seminar will be constructive and fruitful to all participants. I also welcome our students, faculty who have joined today. I would like once again to give a warm welcome to one and all. And I hope the seminar will be a great success. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for your welcome speech, the Dean, Dr. Chayada Tanavisud. So next, I would like to introduce um, today's presenters. On behalf of uh, the organizers, I would like to extend my warm welcome to the keynote speakers being hosted for the first time in our webinar. So please welcome Professor Dr. Jintawi, Jintawi Klai Sang, Chulalongkorn University Department of Educational Technology and Communications Professor, she studies flipped classroom blended learning, virtual learning, ubiquitous learning, disruptive technologies, and moves. She has written extensively on these topics and is developing novel methods to improve primary school students' thinking and motivations. Um, she is Julalongkorn University Faculty of Education, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, ICT, and Network. She has received multiple prizes for her inventions, including gold and silver medals from various international invention contests held in 2020 and 2022. Professor Dr. Jintawi Klai Sang has authored several books related to e-learning and educational technology, including ubiquitous technology to enhance learning, outcome-oriented design, and systematic production and use of, the, use of the media for learning in the 21st century. Now, I would like to welcome Associate Professor Dr. Thanat Nath Chattapakarat. is a lecturer at the Office of Education, Educational Technology at Sukhothai Thamathirat University. She has experience in developing and arranging distant learning system, producing learning and teaching materials in various media. And using digital technologies in education and training, she has also served as a professor moder moderator and speaker and has done research in the field of educational technology. She has given lectures on digital transformation, digital skills development, and building skills using technology in learning management. She is currently working on several research projects related to innovative innovative digital technology, 
social media literacy development and developing a learning model for the Thai MOOC platform. So you can expect each speaker to have the floor to Professor Dr. Jintawi Klai Sangka. Thank you very much, Ka Kun Satritai uh, and Kun Yumon Bray. And, um, and thank you, uh, Dean of the doc, uh, Dr. Sayada Naka, and Kasawati Ka, the Ko Azan Natara Naka, Sati Ka. Uh, thank you so much for having me here, Naka, for um, this evening. And um, what uh, Dr. Tananat and I prepare for today is to um, to share with you about uh, uh, the new trend in educational technology and uh, along with the workshop. So mainly I will focus on, you know, the conceptual and the training part. And for Dr. Tananat, she will focus on the workshop part. So uh, together you will, you know, receive um, the best, uh, I mean, you know, both uh, the concept idea and also the hands-on workshop uh, for today. So without further ado, let me share my slide. Um, here you go. So what I understand is you all are the um, graduate students majoring in education. Oh, all right, right? Oh, and some of you are um, probably alumni. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. So uh, is, uh, is that correct, right? I mean... Uh, you are the current student and some are the alumni, right? Yes, Kajan. Okay, Ka. Okay. So um what I would like to um start is um to uh I, I want you to uh, think about um today. Um we call now is the in the era of we call the uncertain post-COVID-19 or uncertain next normal because we not really sure what will happen next, you know, after things like getting back to the normal, like, you know, we have the face-to-face -face class, but like today still, we will still have, you know, some of the online mode type of class or the conference. So uh, in the future is quite uncertain, uh, you know, for the direction. However, um, in order to be what we call the um, global digi digital citizenship in this era, um, um, to, to the best of you know, my knowledge, I think that there should be uh, three major key drivers that we're going to focus on today's talk. So first, you have to be equipped with you know, the technology trends. With, that's why you have the seminar today, right? Second, you have to keep reskill and upskill with your expertise, meaning that you have to uh, be equipped with your um, the content, the up-to-date content. And there are so many ways that you can, uh, you know, like um, keep you up-to-date regarding the content. Content in this case, meaning that um, whether you are teacher teaching like mathematics, English or science or I mean any subject, you have to, you know, keen in that area and keep up to date. So and third, uh, in order to fulfill like uh, to become the global digital citizenship with, you know, the rapid change of the digital transformation, the growth mindset become uh, one of the key driver in order to empower you know, the concept of uh, for you to become the lifelong learner. So um, to conclude this, I would like to uh, point out that there are the, uh, in my point of view, these are the three key driver uh, that you need to be equipped in order to become the global digital citizenship. So our talk today will focus on these three areas, how you going to be um you know up to date with the technology trend how you going to reskill upskill yourself with you know your content expertise and how you will be able to um be equipped with the concept of growth mindset if you have um these three key driver 
when we're looking at the teaching and learning, things will be changed. As we all know that teacher will change the role, you know, in uh, become the coach and the activities, assignment and everything happen in the class will be fo more focused on authentic tasks and assessment. <laughs> Students will, um, will become a lifelong learners. They're learning how to learn, unlearn and relearn. So this role will be changed. And also, if you keep in mind with these three key driver, with uh, the technology, content, and growth mindset, you will be able to um, design and develop the new educational innovation. You will keep up to date to the global trend. And um, most importantly, in today's trends, um, whenever you do any academic works, you have to be sure that it connected with the business world as well. So I will show you example later. And the uh, uh, last aspect that I will say that um, if you fulfill with this three key driver, you're going to be ready and become the global citizenship where you have uh, the technology with you. Uh, you keep the content up to date as long as if you know the foreign language, especially like if you know English well, so you'll be able to, you know, look for the content from all over the world. And um, um, you'll be able to work with other people or what we call the co-creator uh, in the multidisciplinary, and that would make you to become the innovator. So my talk today will focus on this three key driver and these three aspects, okay? So uh, the first aspect, we're going to focus on the technology. When we're talking about the technology, there are um, the reference that I would like to point out for you to further use this. Um, this one is the report called Data Reportal uh, that I also have it in my Google Drive folder that I share with everyone. Um, you already got the link. Uh, let me share the link with you first. Oh. Um, the Google Drive link is um, right here. Okay. This is the link for you to access um, um the for uh the this folder the today um talk on the materials uh this is the 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 file that i use uh the presentation file along with that i also attach uh this called digital 2021 digital 2022 is the global office report related to the digital technology and uh, for the digital 2023, actually it's already came out, but I didn't attach for you. I would like you to use your searching skill <laughs> to search by yourself. So um, you will get to know, um, you know, this kind of report and you can continually use it to, uh, to update about the digital trends, okay? So uh, let's uh, look at some that I, um, capture it for you that I think is important. It's good to know. Uh, let's take a look of the uh, regarding the digital technology in the um, the overview, the world, the global view. In 2022, um, that is the report talking about the daily time spent using the internet, and this. Uh, data they collect from the internet user age 16 to 64. And um, usually like this kind of report, they will show you the worldwide average. The worldwide average using the internet is around 6.58 hours. For Thailand, we hear above the average. Uh, daily time spent using the internet is around nine hours for Thai people. And then when we look Looking at the time spent using the internet on mobile, it is very interesting that the worldwide average is around 3.43 hours. Thailand is um, number two, uh, follow, um, follow, 
follow Philippines uh, five hours, 528 hours. So these to confirm, you know, like what, what we see that, okay, um, during the COVID time, Thai students, they, um, you know, like when they take the class, they took the class, they usually, you know, get on the mobile. So this stat is really confirm, you know, like what we, what really happened in Thailand. For us as the educational te technologies, we usually looking at, you know, this kind of information and then we will analyze the learning style, um, the, what we call the, the learner's persona, uh, you know, like what kind of devices they have, what kind of behavior they, uh, they are, they have, and then we will uh, decide, you know, our teaching and learning that go in line with, you know, their habits. Um, here, when we're looking at the device ownerships, this one went back to 2021. We found that for Thai um, people, uh, more than 99% have mobile phone. For smartphone, 98.9. Laptop and desktop, around 48. And the tablet is around one third of the Thai population. So these stats, meaning that if as a teacher, uh, if we're going to prepare, you know, like better the online content or the activities, we have to be sure that uh, it needs to be able to compatible with, you know, like mobile, smartphone, laptop, and also the tablet, because these are the devices that learning learner have. And it's going in line with the concept, uh, the learning concept, what we call is the uh, BYOD, bring your own device concept, that uh, meaning that now today the institution, the university, usually like we will not provide, you know, all of these devices for the learners. Rather, we will prepare our course materials, activity and assessment that compatible with, you know, like learners' devices. Okay, so, uh, you know, like the, the concept of um, the digital technology now today is going to be toward that direction. Also, uh, using myself as an example, since I am the educational innovator as well, usually I'm looking at, you know, like these stats. For example, what I've seen that smartwatch and wristband, the number of, you know, like on um, the owner is increasing every year. So I can predict that this is going to be the trend. So if I'm going to develop the new innovation, I'm going to focus on the use of, you know, this kind of device like smartwatch, wristband, smart home device, IoT, or like virtual reality device. Okay. Um, now let's uh, move to the online content activities. When we take a look closer to Thai people, we found that Thai people like to watch online video a lot watch vlog a lot, uh, up to 51.4%. And also at the same time, like to listen to the music streaming, online radio station, and also a uh, podcast. So meaning that uh, when as an instructor, if you decide to, um, if you plan to develop the online teaching learning content, this may be something that you may consider. For example, if you're going to um, do the recording video clips, that would work because um, Thai people, you know, like to do that a lot already. Podcast may be another alternative uh, option that you may do the, you know, like um, the podcast, your lecture in podcast. So um, learners may be interested in, or if you even look for the research, um, study, you may compare, you know, the video and the radio, the podcast, whether which one learner learn better or, you know, like which one is match their learning style uh, and how and, you know, things like that. So these are, um, you know, like um, the new trend in technology regarding, you know, the that driving education. Um, this one, this just came out January this year. Um, we found that, you know, like to confirm our belief, what we see, uh, we see that, you know, now today, um, we will no longer, you know, watch the television 
itself, but we looking at uh we also you know like uh watching like streaming TV content via the internet, like you know um Netflix and you know like the uh YouTube and things like that. This is the worldwide average, like around 90%. And Thailand also again above the average here is around 95% that you know, like um we uh, watch the TV content via the streaming services. When we're looking at the searching behavior, this is also very interesting. Um, we found that for Thai people, um, we not only use the conventional search engine alone, but uh, people getting to use more and more with the voice search or voice command, 48.8%. And another interesting thing is um, use of image recognition tools, 51.4%, meaning that this kind of technology, voice technology and image recognition technology are acceptable kind of technology for Thai people. So as the educator, instructor, you may think about how can you use this type of technology in your class. Uh, for example, uh, for the voice search, I'm thinking about, you know, like many times, for example, if you're teaching English, uh, uh, English class, and you would like to uh, ask your student to practice with, um, you know, the pronunciation, you may Thinking about the voice technology, something very simple, for example, if you use like um, Google Docs, I used this with my daughter and it's worked very well. And then I will ask her to read maybe, you know, like cartoons or like um, any essay. And then I will turn on these voice typing tools. Let me show you. Um, where is the here voice typing tool? So I will click, and this one really help you to practice the pronunciation. See, the more uh clear pronunciation you have, the more accurate you know with the typing tools it is. So this one you may use with Thai students to practice their pronunciation. You may ask them to write the essay and record, you know, like uh, using these white typing tools so they can practice. And what I remember, you can choose whether you will go by British English or American English, even, you know, like can do that, okay. So things like this, this is the, um, the way to apply, you know, like um, uh, the information out there regarding the digital technology to your teaching and learning. Okay. Next, um, this one, this is about the voice assistant. So I'm quite interested in the use of voice technology. So I start to looking at the report on January, 2023, and they're talking about the voice assistant to find information. Seeing that people start to use it a lot more. Um, another interesting thing is that I try to look, you know, like what uh, Thailand uh, hit number one in, you know, like what kind of, in what area regarding the digital technology. And I found that, Thai people, we are number one in online shopping. You know, online, uh, weekly online purchase, we are number one, even more than um, South Korea, China, and, you know, India, U UK, US. You know, like, this is the worldwide average, and we really, you know, like above, lot, lot above the average, like this here. So very interesting. So um, to, to imply this, uh, finding or these stats to our teaching and learning, I would say that you have to set up your class like the way when, you know, like we are shopping, you know, like try to gain motivation and engagement from the learner in, you know, like that sense. So that, that would work. Okay. And this is also um, the top types of uh, website, visit and app use. 
chat and messaging, social network, and you know, these kind of things. So these are all of the very interesting information that you can um, update yourself, look and see, and look for the possibility in applying you know, to your class as a teacher. Okay, and this is the app ranking, monthly activity user, what kind of application. We can look at the user interface design of each application or like even the function or the features, why um, they like you know, such application. And then we can try to uh, apply it to our teaching and learning, okay? So that, that, that's going to be the first part regarding the technology. Now, I would like to um, went back to the year uh, when the pandemic just hit um, a few years ago, tw uh, 2019, 2020, 2021, during that time. You will remember that that time is really um, accelerate the use of the digital transformation a lot. And, um, you know, like Zoom, like, you know, this kind of webinar become like, you know, like people get familiar and more and more used to, to um, you, this kind of technology. And then uh, around beginning last year in 2022, the trend of metaverse came, if you still remember. Um, that time, uh, I still remember like March last year, we did the workshop uh, for K-12 teachers. 60,000 teachers learn uh, how to use the metaverse and apply in that class, like K-12 class. That's the very big trend during that time. And then, um, that, that the metaverse trend. And then, uh, Another end is that at the same time when the new technology came in, we are still looking at the possibility in uh, fulfill the need from the teacher and learners. This one, uh, the problem of this teacher is that because um, she lives in the countryside, so the, um, the computer connected uh, with the internet and things like that become problematic. So um, many um, private organization or many company try to fulfill this gap. That's time I have a chance to work with um, the Google company and they provide this kind of device they call Google Chrome uh, with the Google OS. Uh, the battery in that Chrome book it lasts very long. So for teacher who live in the countryside and teaching agricultural, she still can have the class going on. So that really another end, you know, like toward the very um, fancy technology, but this is another end that, you know, like still we have the uh, a group of the people who still in the countryside and need uh, still have the technology problems and we need to fulfill this one as well. Um, next, I would like to uh, touch on the metaverse trend. Okay. Um, this one happened last year. Last year, um, July 2022. In July 2022, it's going toward the end of the year when the um, COVID-19 or the pandemic getting better. And uh, if you recall, we start to have the on-site conference or on-site class. Some. So during that time, it's quite challenging for us when we host the international conference. So we end up decide to have the conference in three modes. We have the online mode for the, you know, like the participant who could not uh, attend online on, on site. And we also have on site. And we also have the option as the onwards, which we integrate the concept of metaverse into one of the channel for our participants. So in that conference, hosted by Thailand Cyber Univers University Projects, where I am one of their committee member, 
And um, that time when we host this conference, usually when you do the online conference, you will get the e-certificate provided. But that time we, with the Metaverse Trends, we also um, provide the NFT giveaway. NFT shortened for non-fungible token, meaning that you, know, you will get the object in the Metaverse world. So um, this one is the new trend when we're talking about the Metaverse. Okay, so during that time we have the this is the web in the web the Zoom webinar along with the metal words, uh, we call the time move words, and then you know the participant can choose in three modes to participate in the conference. Okay, so uh, last year this trend was really um you know like big thing um the metal words trends. Uh, for example, Hong Kong, uh, they have what they call first twin campuses. So they have um, the universe, the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. They have extended reality campus or the XR campus. So uh, they have two campus in Hong Kong and Guangzhou. So they provide this metaword platform so the students can enjoy um, this campus and they can attend the lecture at the same time in two parallel physical spaces. So this is how the technology and really enhance the learning with the metaverse technology. For China, also um, the Chinese University of Hong Kong at Sunjun also have the campus, the metaverse campus, including the infrastructure interaction and the ecosystem. So they develop the Metaverse campus and using the ubiquitous sensing-based service ecosystem and also the token driven or the NFT that I mentioned earlier, which is the blockchain technology. The blockchain technology token feature a fair and transparent ecosystem. Okay, which considered to be monetary representation for the Metaverse world. So in that community, they have trade and purchases service like this one. And they also have, you know, like um, activities going on on their Metaverse campus. So this is the last year trend. For the South Korea also, they um, co-working with a big IT company is the SK Telecom and the Korea University to build the Metaverse school campus. And um, they use it for, um, you know, like um, to provide the content, especially the content that uh, really hard to find. For example, um, you know, like um, here, they use this as an example, like Bengaki Mountain. I think like it's really hard to go there if, you know, any, I'm not sure like if we have any Korean representative in here, but um that what what I heard is like very really hard to go up there. So they have um you know these metaverse for um the anyone who would like to travel there can do like selfie with um you know like this travel uh, attraction and you know can uh, explore this place, play game, and even do the selfie with this place. So these are the trend last year. For this year, uh, of course, we have to mention about the generative AI. And this is very challenging from us. Let me ask you, how many of you have tried this generative AI or chat GPT already? Can you type one if you tried before? Okay, how many of you have tried it? Great, great. Okay, so we can discuss about this because it's something that, you know, like really, um, really, uh, I would say challenging and some may say is made problematic in our field. So I even use, you know, like um, this chat GPT to help me um to find um to 
to search for to 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 confirm my thought about digital technology. So last night, actually, I check, you know, I type in ChatGPT and ask about digital technology for education, and then here are the conclusion. And I check, okay, I address all, but some I quite disagree. Some I quite agree, and then I regenerate the response for the second time and double check whether you know, like I cover all of these. So um, this is the way that I use Chat, chat GTP, you know, to confirm my thought and idea and concept. And uh, you don't have to agree everything on Chat GPT, you know, you just use it as your um, as someone who give you second opinion. I would say that, okay. So let me double check with you uh, again too with the metaverse concept. How many of you have experience in this metaverse before? Because we will have workshop. So we can get some idea that, you know, like if you are already familiar with it, we can, you know, like uh, give you the workshop on some other tools. Uh, if you're familiar with the metaverse, like special.io, can you type two if you tried before? Okay. Okay, some already tried. Okay, good. I feel. Okay. okay. Now, um, what I mentioned earlier, that's the trends, the very digital technology trends that um, empower the teaching and learning. Now, let's see the existing situation in Thailand. Um, during COVID-19, I have a chance to develop the, the projects with uh, UNICEF. We call the distance learning technology rapid assessment. They want us to really access the existing technology that um available and teacher really use it because you know the new trend is the new trend but um, when we're looking at the context like what i mentioned earlier we have to also consider other factors related factors so when we really go and collect the quantitative data we found that these are the tools that most teachers k-12 teacher use during the pandemic 19 um, for example, when uh, regarding the learning management system, uh, teacher use Google Classroom number one and uh, followed by um, Microsoft Team and Moodle. Regarding the communication system, of course, we, um, we use the Live Group the most, followed by Zoom. And then we further looking at uh, what would be the uh, factors that really influence teachers, secondary student and elementary school student to use and to accept the technology. So this one with this all factor, we can uh, propose this factor that contribute to the policy maker uh, as the recommendation. Um, we use the statistic that time and we found that um, for the acceptance of the technology acceptance, with the teacher, they found that um, the factor that uh, affect to um, the adoption of technology include peer influence, which is the same as the secondary school student. So peer really influence the acceptance of the technology for the teachers. Other factors include sustainability, attitudes, and also the student well-being for the teachers. Regarding the secondary school student, we found that the attitude toward the use of technology is very important. This is go in line with the elementary school students. So if you can see also important, perceived as a, its usefulness and technology complexities is also an important factor for the elementary school students. Okay, peer influence is uh, for the secondary school students. So these are what we found in our Thai context. And this one is the research that I mentioned earlier that we found the gap between, you know, like the very new trend of the technology and, you know, like the 
the really the situation or the existing contact in Thailand. So that time, Google asked us to find a solution to enhance the active learning for the 21st century student with the Google Workspace and Chromebook. And what we found, the conclusion is that even though you have all of this technology, there is one thing is very important. That is the key driver, which is the pedagogy. So um, without this pedagogy, the technology meaningless, okay? So meaning that if as a teacher, for example, you teach mathematics, you have to have the proper um, pedagogy for example, this time we uh, in this case we use deductive learning approach, and and then we use this technology to enhance the effectiveness of this active learning. So you will see that is um subject will have different type of teaching pedagogy, and the technology then will enhance the pedagogy, and the output is you know like learners happy and also enhance their 21st century skills. So these are the, our findings. And here, C for agricultural, teacher organize the classroom in nature to be, you know, like uh, appropriate to the course context. So they need some equipment that lasts long and also um, equipped with the internet. For the mathematics, they need something that, you know, like visualize like that. So that is uh, what happened in Thailand, in Thailand situation. Then let me move to um, the, uh, what I mentioned, uh, the uncertain post next normal. So for the uncertain next normal, uh, as an educator, especially in higher education, we focus on um, these terms. We, we believe that this is going to be the future of um, higher education, teaching and learning. Uh, whether it can be free learning, branded learning, flexible learning and high flag learning. Because we all believe that things will not go back to the same as you know, like uh, only face to face will be the uh, one channel or one, um, one way to learn. But with the combination of face-to-face uh, -face and online, it's become the branded learning model, flexible learning model, or even the high-flex learning model, which is the combination of hybrid learning and flexible learning. And these are all of the research study um, that happened lately during the past few years. I show you some example you will see that there are a lot more use of flip classroom, branded learning or online learning to engage, uh, to enhance the class engagement, to enhance academic performance, or even the learner satisfaction. There are more regarding the pedagogy, they focus more on what we call the lifelong learning skill, for example, like self-regulated learning, um, self-initiated learning, that kind of things. And we will see that many, many disciplines, they fo focus on the technology use of chatbot or the open and flexible learning environment. So the learning environment will be changed to be more hybrid, branded, or free learning. We will see this one for the medical students high flag medical student learning communities. Okay, this one high flag teaching pedagogy in environmental engineering education. So this kind of learning environment will be, I would say um, the future of our learning. And the focus of uh, on the student is more like um, self-initiated learning, self-learning, lifelong learning. Um, I show you this example. This is the um, from the Columbia University's Center for Teaching and Learning. They announced the high flag learning um, last year. And 
uh, again, they said like high flex combine the term hybrid and flexible and um, is the complementary of face-to-face -face or synchronous and online learning asynchronous experience. So they said that uh, combining with the flexible learning aspects, students will have a choice in how they participate in the course as long as uh, these three types of course have the same learning outcome or the learning objectives. So uh, learners have options like participant in, uh, participate in face-to-face -face synchronous class in person, or they can participate in face-to-face -face class session via video conference like today, what we did today. Or the, another option is fully asynchronous via coursework. Or maybe, you know, at your institutes, you may use like Google Classroom, Microsoft Team, or other platform. So there are options, more options for the learners. Here, they said that a high flex class make class meeting and material available. And all the students, regardless of the part taken, will achieve the same learning objectives. So now today, you know, like things are changed. So as long as, you know, like no matter mode of learning, uh, as long as they achieve the same learning objectives, they are acceptable. Okay, so these are, this is one of the example of the new trend regarding the, um, the, the more flexibility, um, more flexible learning that I'm sure that is going to be the future of our education. Now, uh, the challenge from, for us is uh, for these next normal learning, uh, we will say learning ecosystem to redesign, you know, like the, the class to meet the learning outcome. Uh, usually, like when we're talking about um, the ecosystem or the teaching and learning, there are three elements that are very important. The redesign of activities, redesign of assessment, and redesign um, content. Now, when we're talking about to restart the design the activities, there are two key terms that um, ed tech people, educational technology people are uh, find to be very challenging. First, the two that enhance the interactive learning and the second, the AI generative tools. So let me ask you to participate in this one. Mm. I have um, a set of question in Mentimeter. So I'm going to ask you all to join in these um, activities. So I would like you to go to menti.com and use this code. Um, you can either go to menti.com and put this code 24319869 or like uh, follow this link. And once you got in, I would like you to uh, put your vacation plan for a summer break. Ajahn, it is showing that voting is closed and we cannot. Right. Okay, let me check. Um, it's working now. Let me try. Yes. Okay. So your vacation plan for summer break. <laughs> <laughs> this ski, huh? Part time job, go back to China, Seattle, on the beach.
place. So I believe like many of you have used this kind of, we call the audience response system, like this kind of things a lot. Um, I use this a lot, you know, like um, as the ice breaking activities. Sometimes I think like, you know, as the Asian culture, it's hard for us to, you know, speak up. But to write something anonymously, it's a lot easier for us. So for example, like, you know, these kind of things, once you feel it, this is anonymous, you kind of feel like feel free to join and to share your thought and idea. Okay, so this is one way that, you know, you can, you know, like um, integrate this into the class activities. Okay, to start the class, to do the ice breaking activities. Um, next, next question. This is the word cloud. So I would like you to put like three positive words for a back. So what do you feel like uh, these assumption universities? Um, you know, like your three um words for assumption universities. <laughs> okay. Remember, make it positive, positive words. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. English, integrity, supportive, e-learning, beautiful, that's good. Antique, mm, supportive, that's good. International, enriched, warm, well-known, right. So the concept of what cloud is that, you know, like the information the input information the more number it is the bigger of the font will representative on the screen so i use this a lot when uh, for example when i teach the class and i would like to get to the conclusion what student really uh, feel like in you know that topic so i ask them to put like the keyword like similar to this and then once we got the keyword we can you know like uh, recap the class or you know like conclude the class and then just really ask them to use this keyword to write a reflection so they will you know like keep in you know like that keyword they will not you know just talking about anything in that reflection so keep in mind about this keyword or even like when you have the class discussion if you kind of brainstorm first about the keyword that you know like you must address so this can be one of the tools that you can use uh, what cloud okay so for example like this one we uh, got to the conclusion that uh, when we think about a bag is like international supportive english professional integrity beautiful you know like prof uh you know like uh all of these you know like that have um the the size the big size meaning like uh there are you know like more data co when comparing to other words okay so um last last type of um you know the this audience response system that you can choose is uh this one I use a lot too like when I you know would like to know some of the learners background like in this case we think we're going to have the workshop so we would like to know um your experience toward you know, the programs that we're going to cover today and then we can you know like know that we have to start at the you know, very beginning or you already have some experience to what, you know, like some of the applications. So I would like you to rate on, you know, like um, what you feel comfortable, one to five. And then we, we can see like, you know, like um, your experience with all of these programs. Wow, you're all good. You're already familiar a lot with our Padlet, Mentimeter, Quizzes, Chat GTP, GPT, PowerPoint, ClassPoint, MOOC, and MetaWords.
Good. So this one will tell like number and the average. Okay, okay good. So now um, tools like these. I show you these. Um, many instructors have used this kind of tools in the class. And um, the terminology to call this kind of tools like Mentimeters, Quizzes, um, Kahoot, we call it as the audience response system. So if you're looking at the academic paper, for example, like in this academic paper, the name, the title of the paper called Improved Performance in and Preference for Using Think Pair Chair in a Flip Classroom. So meaning that here, uh, this professor uh, teaching the medical, uh, teaching medical students, and um, he wants to focus on uh, from to increase the uh, the active learning instead of passive lecture-based teaching method. So in this study, he used what we call the flipped classroom model. So he, uh, meaning that the flipped classroom concept is we uh, bring whatever, uh, what usually happen in the class like lecture to outside the class and whatever outside the class like doing assignment to bring into the course. So, uh, for the free learning, usually learner will look at the video clips, pre-record video clip from the teacher, instructor, and then when they come to the class, teacher will conclude the concept and then have the activity to be sure whether student understand or not, and then have more um, meaningful learning activity in the class instead of keep lecturing. Okay, so in this case for the flip classroom, teacher, uh, this professor asked students to look at the video before coming to the class. And when they come to the class, they integrate think, pair, share, teaching strategy. You remember think, pair, share, right? Think at yourself. So this professor asked learners to use the audience response system. And in this case, he used poll everywhere. So he have a set of questions. So learner will participate in that quiz, multiple choice question. And then after individual response record, the same question will post again. And then this time, teacher asks learner to share, to pair up with their peer and try the best, the better answer. So the results show that learner really learn, you know, like after they discuss with their peer and do the test again. Okay, so this is the way that, um, you know, like uh, he used in his class. Uh, to my conclusion is that whenever you going to bring technology in the class, the most important thing is you have to bring it together with the pedagogy. Without the pedagogy, again, technology meaningless. Okay, so um, here I propose a few set of the technology or the pedagogy for you. So think pair share is like, you know, what we mentioned earlier. And these are the set of um, active learning pedagogy strategy or the active learning strategy that you may apply in your class whenever you use the technology, okay? Uh, better um, think pair share, like I mentioned earlier. You may think about so pair share, team pair solo. When you ask the learner to use the technology to work as a team, and then once they competent, more competent, they let them do it with the pair and then they do it individually. Okay, so these are all the active learning strategy that go very well with when you go into plan to integrate the different kind of technology in your class. Okay, now um, we will go to the workshop. We will explore more um, tools uh, that you can use in your class and uh, these all other um, up to the tools that um, instructor agree to use it and file it to be benefit. So Dr. Tananat will start with quizzes. 
and then she will demonstrate uh, chat GPT and then we can you know like have some discussion she will also share you um you know like um the how to use the class point which is the PowerPoint um integrated tools okay and also other tools that she prepared for you so let me uh, give the floor to uh Ajahn Tananat Ka. Thank you, Professor Jindavi, and good evening, everyone. Okay, after um, Dura received the concept of empowering digital learning ecosystem uh, for global digital citizenship in the digital era, now I show you about um, used uh, digital tools. Uh, the first, I uh, put my uh, activity on a uh, chat. You can click link on chat and uh, you um, writing the nickname and start go to uh, my activity. Okay. Okay. It's the first one. Oh, <laughs> it's uh, very fast. Okay. Okay, thank you for your coming. Okay, I think um around uh, 40, I get start, okay? 40, okay, wait a minute. Okay, I think I start, uh, oh, okay, start this activity okay before you have a host use uh, user okay what are the most Thai people favorite online content activity okay so thank you young bye Okay. At least uh, two people in the this activity not uh, uh don't answer. Okay, you think uh part participant view, okay, and chat chat view, full question view, okay, participant view. Okay, is uh this time over, and. Leaderboard, you show, oh, wow, HTET -E is the uh, correct answer. Watch our live video. Okay, uh, let's go. The next, okay. Uh -huh. High flag combine the terms hybrid and. You can um, type. Alphabet and I um, key answer eight alphabet. I think everyone uh, correct answer. As a teacher, you can um, uh, check uh, participant view. Hey, so you don't answer, you not answer. Hurry up, hurry up. It's a time over, okay? Hurry up, hurry up. Okay. One, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, time's up. Okay, I think, oh, read the board. Oh, so or oh, is uh, Sarah. Sarah is the number one. Flexible, yes, it is correct. Uh, four, 14 and incorrect. Uh, I think you are uh, uh, incorrect response. Okay, in the next time, is the next correct? Okay. And then can we also see the incorrect answer? Huh? What kind? What word that they put in? 
โอเคเอ่อ่อ the next time โอเคค่ะค่ะค่ะค่ะ that would be interesting to see what they put in <laughs> what the uh, what is the level of interest in quiz quizzes okay you can check uh the interest that in uh top your topics when you are teaching um participant or learners yes okay i think is a uh, quiz is is a very interested okay 22 people and somewhat interested eight people and natural three people okay the last question you can uh design activity for um typing sentence please describe the advantage you like about quizzes fast yes mm -hmm. fun and engagement engagement competition easy fast easy to use motivate entertaining yes good online instruction yes fun and exciting to participants and getting off uh, to all students. Fun, fun, cute, fun, interactive, yes. It's a goal of a digital tools. Get more idea, easy, motivate, freedom, yes. Interactive, new respond. And participant view, you can check participant view this room and uh, 43 participants, you can um, call participant view. Hey, Jill, Nat. Entertaining is very good. Okay, interesting and guest to our students. This is fun and exciting to participate for children fun easy interactive fun and engaged easy motivate case knowledge yes interactive okay so um um this about timing and question yes okay this is um overview um when you uh, use as a user or learners okay after that you can um, check about knowledge after you teach uh, learners. You can call Sue. Can you explain more about uh, the uh, word that you um, typing on the active activity? Okay, okay, ka. Then call um spin again or listen to okay, close. Okay, yes. Ah. After you uh you see about uh the first ah the, the first Sarah is the first Dr. Matt second and H T E T and the third okay said proud <laughs> proud to uh three people and you can uh check another another one score and uh uh the student uh, have an activity is involved activity and you can send the quiz report to Sarah parents and, mm. and uh, okay exit after you um do know about uh, this uh quizzes as a learner now I'm show you as a host okay let's the first time you should uh sign up with this website okay this is the first website it is a it a home home page oh sorry okay you can uh link at a, in the chat box okay yeah uh, quizzes.com okay quizzes.com and uh, you can uh, read about uh, plan 
and you can uh, check the example multiple choice uh, match fill in the blank yes and trust by teacher you can read about uh, information before you use uh, this digital tool and after I think I uh, choose to try this quizzes, you click sign up. You can sign up uh, quizzes, continue with Google, continue with Microsoft, continue with Facebook, continue with email. Okay, and now I'm sure you uh, continue with uh, gmail.com, okay? And the first, when you uh, the homepage as a host, you can uh, click create. Uh, the, the advantage of this quiz is you can explore any topic that you're interested in about computer, career, it, math, English, social study, language. You can uh, bring the uh, activity and use this uh, activity already, okay? But if you want to create by yourself, you can click create. What would you like to create? You create, uh, you can create quiz or lesson. If you, uh, have a um, PowerPoint, you can uh, go to a PDF file and add activity. Today, I show you about a quiz as a, this activity. Okay. You can uh, click quiz for plan uh, free. You can use uh, feature multiple choice fill in the blank and for higher order thinking you can use a uh, draw activity open end and an other poll and slide okay the first time you you click uh, multiple choice is the basic you have um uh you have you have a question that you uh place Yes, you paste question or you type your question here and place. Okay, uh, you can type answer this area. Watch online video. Yes, and listen to music streaming and listen to the online station. Don't means you check the correct answer. This is very important. You check. And so then, work is similar to like um before a long time ago we used the Kahoot, right? I think yes, everyone has yeah. experience with that. So the interface is quite similar, right? But yes. there are more features. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can um uh, put the image Mm -hmm. uh, on the question, you can search uh -huh, and online. Image. Okay, in the next time, okay. And uh, after you check, watch our live video, if uh, you more, uh, choice you can add an option okay or delete uh, mm -hmm. the answer okay okay and you setting uh, the point mm -hmm. one two three four five uh, five point and you setting uh, the time to uh, allow the answer question I think the the first uh, the first the first time you you should uh, have a time to student, okay? And if the question more than one correct, you should this active, okay? 
uh, and you can save save this question. Okay, if you another question, you put create new question and fill in the blank. Yes, you can. It's the same uh, step. Type your question or your paste the uh, text on the, this area and make an answer as correct if the answer is exactly, exactly is a flexible. Oh, sorry, it's flexible. Type your answer here. And if you another uh, alternative answer, you can uh, click add on alternative answer. Okay, and if you don't have an, uh, an alternative answer, it's a delete. Okay, and you click, don't forget point, fill in the blank, time. Okay, and save. And create a new question. When you um poll, you do uh, you want to uh poll, you click poll and it's the same step. Okay. Uh-huh. And very interesting. Somewhat interesting and natural. not very interesting. And you put add an option. Okay. And this is not great. It is the poll activity. Okay. You can uh, select second, uh, 36 second. Okay. And save. It's the last question. Place a new question. You can um, open in. Yes, open and be super. Oh, sorry, because uh, participant will record the response here is the super pan. Is you can <coughs> not use this uh feature. Okay, you can uh cancel. You cannot save or you will upgrade to super. Okay, cancel. God, I'm sorry, sorry. Need Bitcoin. Cancel. Why I cannot <laughs> do this? Cancel. <laughs> okay. Uh, after you um, take a quiz complete, you save, you click save and show on my library. Show on my library. What? My library. Okay, it's a draft, yes. Okay, you can click here, it's an auto, automatic save. When you have a problem, when you, uh, anything, you can uh, click again and to do again, continue editing, okay? You can continue editing and create a new question, open in. I think I have a problem about when I click my screen. Do they have the maximum number, Khachahan? Number uh, of questions in is um set, uh, uh, I think it's a I I I should um 20, 20, 20 question. Mm. Yes, it's enough that uh, but I think if you have uh, activity on a classroom um, around um, five or ten 
questions are question. Yes, it's yes, appropriate. Age. But the maximum the program allow us to do is 20, uh, yeah, Jan. We uh, never reached the maximum yet, right? Uh, so yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. And you can uh, save. You can uh, type untitled quiz. Okay. T E S T. Uh, subject education at uh, agriculture art bio computer design another that you want okay uh, great not for um, element you can use on a uh, university or professional development okay uh, professional development English okay and uh, you click visibility public visible to everyone and upload of type online activity. Okay, insert. Save and continue. Okay, this is a uh, complete uh, the, the uh, advantage of uh, quizzes. You can use as a instructor les lesson, start a live quiz, like uh, uh, this activity and you can uh, put a classic or uh, instructor pace and you can use these quizzes as a asynchronous learning as by homework uh -huh. you can uh, set deadline you can set deadline but if a free pan is a uh, cannot go to uh, about uh, three uh, two weeks okay if you have um super plan you can more two weeks okay and uh, when uh, it's a new mode if a student or some place does not uh, internet you, the student can uh, mobile phone you can use a uh, paper mode to student this is uh, a disadvantage that you can use uh, every uh, situation. And when you use uh, instructor pace like uh, this activity, you can uh, set time, show leaderboard, or suffer, shuffle, answer option, and continue. Don't forget you click or share wire or use any device join my quiz.com enter game code you can uh, copy link go to the uh, uh, on the chat to the uh, like group for your student yes and after a student uh, coming on the uh, program you can see the participant the number of participant and you mm -hmm. click start okay I think this is a um, benefit and I think you can use the quizzes guide uh, to engagement your participant or student. Okay. I think it's very interesting like um when you have like different kind of modes, like you have the paper-based mode, right? Yes. And yes. Um, the uh, instruction-led mode. And also yeah. the homework mode, right? Yes. Think about if you conducting like um thesis, dissert uh dissertation or like research, you can compare like you know these mm -hmm. modes, which one is mm -hmm. the most effective for your learners, and you even can differentiate like what kind of learners, like you know dependent learner, independent learner, or you know like different kind of learners, and to see like which one match them first. And the paper mode, it will be even more interesting, especially in the remote areas where you have, you know, like um, no internet and, you know, like that kind of things. I mean, yes. if you go back and, you know, do the research in your country and you find this to be the difficulty to, you know, like uh, in, in your context. So this one going to be very interesting. Yes. Yeah, you I can bring the QR code and use in the class, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I hope you to join uh, about users quizzes on the um, your topic and your contents. 
Okay. So any question about this first workshop? The um quizzes. So some of you use this before, right? According to the survey, some of you have experience, and some maybe <coughs> they, they like uh this uh you you may heard it, you may uh use this as the learners before, but haven't you know really create your own one. So now you you find the way, and you know you can see like it's quite user friendly. I would say. Okay, so now uh, I would like you, thank you, Ajahn Thananath Nakha. Let you, uh, we, I, I would like you to think about how you can apply these um, programs, uh, share the idea about how can you use the quizzes or even share the link if you already complete one, you know, if you just follow Ajahn Thananath, you know, the workshop and then you can really create your own one. You can share it here and also at the same time share the idea about how to use it and it's going to be even um a lot more better or like a lot more i mean meaningful if you can also combine it with you know like the pedagogy you know different active learning strategy the one that i showed you earlier about um you know like this is an example this professor used um, audience response system together with think pair share in his free learning classroom. So if you can think it that way, you know your technology will be very powerful if you can integrate it with the tech, uh, with the pedagogy. So now um, let me share you um, the Padlet link um, here, and then let's see how can you um, let me find our um, share. How can you apply or use, you know, these quizzes in your class? Mm, copy link, then I put it in here. Okay. And um, this is the QR code. If you would like to scan, enjoy these activities. So once you got, uh, you get into the Padlet, you click on this plus sign and then you can, you know, like put um, your answers, your idea, your thought, um, your product from quizzes that you already developed your own first quizzes. So put it in here on um, the second column, sorry. The first column is the metaverse activity. So this is the second one. We skip the first, we start with the second. So share the idea here, click on this plus sign and then share your very thought idea about how to use the quizzes. Okay. Let me download the QR code. Uh, if you have any question, you can always ask us. Okay, this sounds promising. We apply quizzes to the class soon, but could you please elaborate a little bit how, for example, um, you're going to use this for um, formative assessment, summative assessment, to use this in what subject, what class, in 
and how. So um, here, if you click on edit, you can always edit your post and then, yeah, elaborate a bit more. Mm -hmm. Example, this one use quizzes at the beginning of the class to evaluate student background knowledge of the topic. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. okay. um, this person answered very interesting talking about um, there are also application on iOS and Android as well as for someone who use their personal device. So thinking about, you know, the steps that I showed you earlier about the, you know, the context of the device ownership that, you know, in Thailand and also in your country, you may have to consider this one as well. If, you know, like they have um, different kind of devices, be sure that the tools, the application, the program you use, is compatible or like, you know, like um, everyone in your class have the accessibility. So this is a very good answer. Thank you. Okay. Um, this person used quizzes a lot in your computing and ICT class at start, middle and at the end for all assign assessments. That's good. Meaning that you use this as the formative evaluation to check your learner understanding and also probably you use it at the end to uh, as a summative evaluation of the class on that day. That's good. Pre-test. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now, some of um, you already go ahead and share idea about chat GPT. Ajahn, Tana, not right on you. Um, chat the um, how to use chat GPT in case some haven't had this experience before, so that you know, like um, person can you know join this conversation. So I give the floor back to you, Ajahn. Thank, thank you, ha, Professor Tintobi. Uh, welcome to uh, Chat GPT. I think is uh, uh, everyone uh, have a uh, experience about Chat GPT. Um, today I have a uh, some keyword to use uh, Chat GPT uh, for ex uh, effective. Okay, after you uh, log in, uh, uh -huh. if, yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, share, share screen. Okay. So don't have a uh, sign up. Uh, Google account. Okay, the first. Uh. Okay, is it a uh, is the guideline guideline for use the uh, chat GPT? You can uh, use verb to uh, explain. Yes, uh, today I show you about. I have a question, and I want to uh, chat GPT to uh, explain about digital tools for enhance creativity. Okay, you can use explain in the first. I think ChatGPT respond to me. Okay. Told me about a uh, graphic design software to uh, digital tools for enhanced creativity. Okay, mm -hmm. and video editing software. Mm -hmm. And uh, such as Adobe Premiere, uh, Final Cut Pro movie. Okay. 
3D model solvent. Okay, this is the example. When you use a uh, chat GPT, you can use a verb explain, uh, example, compare. Okay, and I think uh, read an uh, article on a skill in chat GPT for design works. Okay, if you have a plan to uh, business, you can you can use uh, uh, chat GPT to uh, create design a brief for uh, Thai tea cafe. Okay. If you want to uh, open a Thai tea cafe, you can use ChatGPT uh, create a design brief for Thai tea cafe. Yes, the first okay. I think is <laughs> thinking <laughs> thinking about create a design. Okay, design brief. Thai tea cafe overview our client. Uh -huh. High quality Thai tea drinks and snack. They want the cafe to have. So is uh, I show you you can use um ChatGPT is uh, uh your friends your coordinator when you are uh, design something about uh Thai tea cafe okay you can attack you can uh, uh tell me about the target audience for Thai tea cafe okay if you um. If you want to a design concept for Thai tea cafe, yes, you can put. Oh, pretty conversation. Okay, sorry. Please reload conversation. Generate response. You can uh, click here and uh, shoot. Uh, Change the sentence, okay. Oh, sorry. And save and submit again. Something went wrong. Oh, sorry. To regenerate, respond, and cancel. Choose color for the tidy or oh, cafe. Cancel. Sorry. Awesome. Save and submit. Something around this tiny loading conversation. Okay, you have a put a new chat. Okay, and uh, this is a tip for ChatGPT Insight. ChatGPT Insight can uh, uh, use for coding. Yes, mm -hmm. when you put uh, the sentence, write a program uh, to calculate some in Java. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can, uh, mm -hmm. you can copy code uh, for use another situation that you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, stop. And you want to uh, book summary or mm -hmm. resume creation. Yes. Uh, so um, uh, example about create a professional resume to apply and for a uh, designer, instructional designer job. The guideline for use this template. Okay, and stop generating. And new chat, when you uh, write, if you want to uh, write article, your uh, expect, uh, ex example, you can use keyword, write an article on innovation. Mm -hmm.
seem like they're getting tired because yes. <laughs> <laughs> keep asking your question. <laughs> you have you have a time to thinking about this. Uh, this uh, then when they're slowing down, like yes. <laughs> okay, and uh, the last trip you can uh summarize term and condition of TikTok. Stop generating. Okay, in chat. Okay, please. Mm. Mm. Okay, and if you want to uh, chat GPT summary a book, you can use uh, keyword summary book as a man. Summary book is the safe time to uh, mm. read a book. If you don't have a time, you can. Uh, Use a uh, chat GPT as an assistant for help you. Okay, you did uh, some uh, tips for I think it's a uh, useful for uh, everyone. Use chat GPT for uh, your work. Yeah, can be your writing buddy, your 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 friend, your assistant, right? Yes, yes. So, ha. Okay, and Ajahn Ka, uh, I, I think you also uh, prepare something about, um, they are, for example, when we, normally when we write the manuscript or the paper, the university will use the, the program uh, for the plagiarism, like turn it in. Mm -hmm. And now there are such program to, you know, to detect your, uh, whether this generate from the chat GPT or not. So can you introduce us some? Ka? Yes, Ka. yes, Ka. Uh, this is uh, a uh, example website gltr.io. You can use uh, this website to uh, check your uh, GPT sentence. Mm -hmm. You can uh, uh, paste the sentence, this copy or uh, this uh, box and when you put this sentence I don't the lines. Maybe. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you copy okay. the, the, the whole paragraph, right? Yes, to copy the uh, whole paragraph with GLTR to detect automatically and generate text. This is a uh, uh, M MIT and IBM. You can uh, click check out the video demo, okay? And you try the demo, the giant language model test room. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. e uh, example analyze, yes. You can copy a uh, paragraph or a sentence is uh, here and click analyze. Mm -hmm. It is a show about state that when you click mm -hmm. and it will show about a uh, percentage of the AI generate you can <laughs> uh, uh, use this website or uh, GPT-0 GPT-0 is a website you can use for check like uh, this website you can put a uh, sentence here. Yes, and get result. Mm -hmm. Your text. If you uh, put from uh, chat GPT, is it show that a uh, sentence is a uh, likely AI generation? Mm -hmm. Yes. So as a human, we create AI, you know, generative AI, and then mm. we have to be smarter than the AI. <laughs> so we create, something, you know, to detect the AI. So, you know, that's why I keep saying like, this is the uncertain post pandemic <laughs> team. So we really don't know what's going to happen next. But, you know, as long as, you know, like we just try to keep up with these things, you know, and uh, make it 
feel that this is challenging not you know to be some that my, uh that uh might interfere or um problematic in you know our education so i think it's okay you know as long as you know the way to use it and um properly and you can um share the way to use it properly to your students to your learners like many of you have shared it on um the padlet that the the use of the chat gpt is um like you know you have a body here i i like it very much like very supportive as a start uh, as a study body helpful instrument through which um you know you can gain idea for your academic paper so similar to my i use this you know to get an idea whether i forget something to address something or you know like um to double check you know like you know like whether this is uh my idea is covered in all the aspects so we, we use in that sense you know for the chat gpt so this is very good yeah seem that you all have the growth mindset you know like you flexible and don't have the fixed mindset in whether you know like this is something that not good at all we have to avoid using that but seem like you all um feel that the chat gpt is challenging and it's good to know and good to use and good to apply for your work that's good so Ajahn Ka, um, Ajahn, Ajahn Tananat also prepare a more workshop. Naha. So um, we have two more and I think it's, it's good to know. So for the class point, and if we have time, could you please share the meta words? So some of the participants here can, you know, join in the meta words. So maybe two of them, have, uh, maybe just the overview to uh, for everyone to, to see how it works. Because this is very um, the popular tools. These two are the very popular tools uh, for instructors to they widely use it, you know, in Thailand. So uh, huh. I, 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 just, I screen. Okay, ka. Uh, do do uh see a uh, castpoint.io okay and I put the link uh, the castpoint.io uh because I I believe that uh, everyone uh, use PowerPoint to uh lecture based okay if you have a class point it um more powerful uh you can use uh as a plug-in on uh, PowerPoint. And the, the first time before you uh, download, you can uh, uh, study about the introduction class point. It's a recap about um, concept of uh, class point. It's an all-in-one teaching tools in PowerPoint. Uh, the best for gamification and presentation to kids and interac interactive quizzes. Yes, for the powerful presentation, you do, uh, uh, we have um, many um, technique to uh, control your class for concentrate and um, about content when you are lecture for a student and interactive quizzes in uh, PowerPoint. You have um, varied uh pattern about multiple choice like a word crowd and fill in the blank short answer video upload image upload slide door in audio record quick poll and very uh where uh yeah various activity you choose for interactive quiz in powerpoint and uh you can use the gamification system in a PowerPoint. So I show you about uh, presentation tools. When you use, uh, after you install program, you have um, ignore class point on your PowerPoint tab, okay? And you have login and you have um, uh, tools toolbars you can use this uh feature uh presentation tool and i show you if you click slideshow you can 
you can use this uh, feature, okay? Uh, the first, I like this laser. When you use, when I'm talking about annotation, shape, you can zoom in, zoom out about uh, content when you when you teaching student trackable object okay uh, and use a uh, pen you can uh, highlight you can uh, use this feature okay and uh, if you have a um, browser to uh, use another uh, resource you can uh, click you can click here, you can click um, browser and you put the URL and insert slide. You can uh, discuss about this topic already. Okay, and insert slide. Yes. Okay, another. I think this is a powerful for uh, presentation. And quick poll, you can use a uh, quick poll to follow yes, no, and to uh, feedback. You can click feedback. If uh, I would like to know, uh, do you prefer about the uh, presentation tools, uh, you can level for me. If I click start poll, you can use uh, mobile phone and scan QR code to have activity with me, okay? Okay, this example. And, okay, this is a presentation tools. And so if I show you about quiz example, uh, example is a uh, many, create uh, activity like a uh, multiple choice word crowd, short answer, slide drawing, image, upload, fill in the blank, audio record, video, upload, and how to create quiz question after you are install program, uh, plug-in program on your uh, computer. You can uh, design your slide with your question and uh, add the question button, click the button and view student uh, responsive live. Yes. And is there an example you can uh, test as a, a learner? This is a card code. Okay. You can use, uh, uh, you can use mobile phone and uh, join my activity the differentiate of this class point when comparing with uh, the earlier tools like quizzes mm -hmm. and the millimeter is um there are the seamless yes. between the content and the activity right yes so in the powerpoint mm -hmm. say that if you have the content mm -hmm. you can teaching um during the class and then you can add the activity in that PowerPoint. Yes, yes. Because uh, this class point, you will install it as the add-on. Yes, yes. And like a plugin. On the, the plugin. Yes. It will yes. show on the, the program, the PowerPoint menu. So yes. it will be seamless. You don't have to jump out mm -hmm. PowerPoint. Yes. And then, so uh, this one is like embed those questions into the PowerPoint. And what I heard is that you can also capture some of the answer and add it to the PowerPoint, right? Yes. Okay. 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 I think award uh, award start to all because uh, you have a participant in this uh, activity. Okay. Start. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and okay. When when I use this, you can uh read the question okay you can read the question and uh, ask your student or participant are, are you ready i click a multiple choice okay one participant respond and you check live status 
to uh, student um 18 student or participant your life there that submit okay you can check this and pending hi cc wendy wait panda ah, okay you can uh check your student why what happened okay okay submit If you are close submission, you can click here. I think it's the well, one minute. I think close submission. Okay. Hurry up, hurry up. Okay. If I close submission, you can click here to show correct. Oh, <laughs> it's already. It's already a uh, for student. Okay. It's a correct B. Yes. Award. Award. Okay. In inside, you have a uh, insert as a light. You have uh, after you have a uh, activity. Okay. Insert as a right. Okay. And the next slide. Ah. Uh, and uh, you you have um word proud like a mentimeter, okay? Uh, what is the first word that you come to mind when you think of learning? Okay, I click word crowd. It's the same. I waiting for a response from everyone. You can see life data again. Pending. Oh and submit it okay mm -hmm. you can change music or uh, off music if you want to respond yes you can click here but this is a uh, powerful because something student uh, no copy uh copy another word of people if if you want if, if you show response but teachers can uh close response after one minute okay book knowledge is a book when you think learner about you can click books trees people showing response Okay, it's a good close submission award star to all. Okay. And then when you use short answer, why do you think people have animal and paid short answer? Cute, cute. And respond. I think the 30 second. Okay, cross submission. Uh, showing response cues for competition shift. Cue fairly as a company relax. Okay, award star to all. Is a gamification is the award to the your student or uh, learners. Okay, ka. And uh, moreover, it is a right drawing plot this line on the graph. Uh, you can use uh, this activity and you can use image upload upload an image of your favorite fictional character do you want to this this activity do you want to this activity ah, image upload you can select uh, my hero and upload I think it's a uh, disability take uh, take a time to shoot uh, search picture and upload it is activity. Okay, I think close activity. Uh, it's many, uh, uh, you can fill in the blank, okay? Ah, okay.
if student uh, you can use code a uh, card code again okay i think it's the show you about a uh, quiz activity is a powerful you can audio recording video uploading uh, anytime do you want to uh, use a uh, half question and i show you something about when you have a presentation uh, powerpoint after you uh, install program you can uh, have uh, ignore class point on the uh, menu menu bar and after you can uh, put the uh, question and you uh, type the question after you can click here click, uh, click uh, multiple choice and use the number of choice uh, if if uh, one correct answer, you can click has correct answer, what the correct answer. And if uh, do allow select multiple choice, you can click, but this uh, question is no. So I think, uh, so I click is the one, is the one uh, correct answer. And if you have a, uh, If you have another, um, uh, if you have another, uh, sorry. Okay. Ah, you can watch tutorial. Okay, you can watch tutorial to uh, study. If you would like to learning, what if you can with uh, to make use feature to multiple choice you, want to allow you can click here you can your question put your answer and submit use as each choice this activity answer. show answer select and close or start the is a guideline for the uh, use this interactive multiple choice question in powerpoint plug in is a seamless to a powerpoint okay So you can use uh you can use this when you click presentation. This is another um feature appear uh, present on you. You can click here, quick poll name picker. Okay. Ha. And you can uh, download uh, as point for presenter, but limit for Windows 10 and Office uh, 2013. But now a uh, developer developed for uh, I'm a uh, MacBook. <laughs> so you, uh, I, what I heard from you is that after you have done all of the teaching and all the activities, oh. and then you can download yes. the class for okay. your students. Right? If, I if, think that, that is quite useful. Okay, if you are uh, the end of activity, you can, uh, you can click share PDF. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can click share PDF. Uh, activity or that you uh, use your class save to student you can click uh, generate pdf mm -hmm. it's like you know this is very useful for the student that they can recap what happened in the class like yes, yes. lecture part and also the activity that's going on in the class i think this is very very much useful and they also uh, embed uh, the answer right like this like this one right the correct yes. answer the, the wrong answer and yes yes question and also answer mm -hmm. yeah okay. any question about class point 
because it's uh, become popular quite uh, lately uh, for you know many teachers in you know K twelve and also higher education because they fight to be um, you know like like what we mentioned like it's all in one you know like you can combine your content and also the activities formative assessment summative assessment in you know like one slide and then at the end you save it as PDF for your student to recap for the class you know things like that so it's it's quite practical and uh, I, I think students will like it a lot because, you know, it's like you have the, all the lecture notes for them. <laughs> uh, uh, but I, I think uh, cast point uh, is uh, appropriate, for a uh, appropriate for synchronous mode. And mm -hmm. quiz is appropriate for synchronous mode or asynchronous mode that you can choose uh, these uh, digital tools for use in your content or your class. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, let's uh thank you, Hajan Tananat. Let's <sighs> recap about these tools. So I would like you to go back again to the Padlet, Naka, and then share the idea about class point, Naka. Yeah, not applicable with iOS or Android. Mm. So it's coming, right? What yes, it's coming. Know? Yes, it's coming. coming. Bear with them. <laughs> and can can I show okay, okay, can I show if if you have uh another another question you can uh go to the castpoint.io and fkq uh castpoint compatible with uh Max OS device uh possibly uh developer uh for any device. Ah. Soon will come. Okay. Okay. Any other uh, interesting thoughts and idea? Ka? Very innovative. Na ka? Download and use is very good. Ka? Yeah. Okay. Um, and what, what I believe is that it, since you are in the master or the doctoral programs, you also need to do the thesis uh, that is, or dissertation. You may consider these as a tools. Uh, you know, it can be one of the tools, innovation tools used in your research as well. In addition to, you know, you use this in your work as a teacher. So think about that. I think it's quite cool. Yeah, easier and more fun, right? That's correct. And I like the interface. The interface is look very user friendly. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kajan. So we still have some time, no? Um, Ajan Tananat prepared the metaverse. Would you like to share some, Mecca? Ha. Or you would like to take some break and I can go on my part. Would you like to, to or just continue on the last workshop, Kajan? Last workshop, Mecca. Okay, ka. For the metaverse, no? Ah, okay, ka. So give the floor to you, Naka. Now the next we move to the meta words, Naka. So we introduce you the special that I O Naka is, uh, it became very famous in last year and until now, Naka. So you may uh okay. see and you know you can see how easy it is and I believe that you can later use this in your class. Student will get very excited. Ka. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, create a new environment. Uh, so when you uh, go to uh, special.io, I put link on the chat. Okay. If you uh, use a trendy popular life now, you can click another if you want to uh, study about uh what 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 the space do uh people uh create uh from uh spatial or you can create a spatial you can uh log uh sign up and uh another time you can uh, log in you can use uh create new environment fail to lot okay create two keys oh, sorry so uh 
so I can refresh website again. So this is the existing uh, one, the one that other people develop the words, the the space, the meta words, right? Yes. And they create yes. and they share to the public, so anyone can join and explore to see how it works, right? Yes, and uh, when you are create environment, you can uh use uh space that uh happen in your free. Okay, you can uh, select uh, example, I like a uh, heaven state. And after you click heaven state, uh, this program will create your state. It's a, take, uh, a little take time. Wait a minute. Meaning that you can create your own words, the meta words, your own avatar, and then you can... Mm -hmm. You have the link invite that you can invite your students to draw these words and to yeah. work on different kind of activities. No. Yes, I think before use a special, you can lead um introduction and uh uh treating and incitement to violence. You can read and condition before a uh, uh, guideline before use a uh, special. Okay. Uh, if you create a uh, space, you can show or uh, you can uh, share link for uh, anyone with the link can view and you can click copy. Okay. And I put in my chat. You can click here and join my space. This is a uh, gesture. You can grab. You can uh, put a um, heart, you can uh, emoji, and you can uh, reaction another people. Okay, you can put uh, some, okay, uh, some text. Hi everyone, or say hello. Hi. Okay, or you uh, put emoji, this, when you use another, okay, you can, hi. <laughs> you can uh, walk around. You can uh, open, uh, my, uh, you can mute uh, my microphone, okay? If you want to, you can uh, text message to another people. Okay, if you want to sit here, you can click this uh, chair and, and you want to uh, walk around here, you can use this time. Okay, some of you mm -hmm. are there, right? Yeah. I think uh, that there are the set of shortcuts, right? that you can use like uh, for example to jump to walk mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. probably that uh... Come on in. you may try like turn on the microphone and speak something for participants who are already in there try hello Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, what I've seen, what teacher use a lot is like, for example, you can choose the the words that um for exhibition. For example, if you have like learner project, you can ask them to put it on, you know, like the exhibition room and then um you know like uh the classmate can go visit um their classmate works and then leave the comment they have the positive tools that you can leave the comment different kind of comments for like uh their uh, classmate 
uh, project or things like that. So there are many ways that you can apply it in your class. So first, you I think what Ajahn Tananat mentioned is the best, that you go and look for different example to see how other people use these meta words. And then you go create your own and, you know, like adjust it to fit your class, fit your students. But, you know, like students like this a lot. I mean, when um they have a chance to communicate with others, especially the class where, you know, like they are not located at the same place, like you do the online class with students from, um, you know, like different country, that kind of things, or like to share the projects. You know, this can be another um, form, another platform that you can share like your learner's project. Yes, this is a situation you can use a reflect about uh, after uh, teaching. You can uh, reflect on other people. Okay, mm -hmm. or uh, before your teaching, you can uh, student and uh, introduce yourself for everyone okay. on your first meet, no? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay, so this is main okay. to choose. Yes, after you are uh, you uh, leave, you can click here and leave uh this uh space from here. Okay, ha. Ha. so uh the program that's uh quite popular uh for to create the meta was called special.io which is the very basic and um easiest one regarding you know when you want to die and develop the meta words okay? and it's quite uh famous popular and widely used in thailand okay? for many instructor to use in their class for their class so you can see a lot of examples out there so uh just one of the two that you can you know think about it and probably use this um, in your class okay, okay. so again Naka, please go to padlet and then share some idea about um the use of these metal words Naka. As uh, for example, um, this person shared with us as a gallery for presentation booth Naka. Nice to visit different places from the classroom to um, educate students about different countries and cultures. This is good. Okay, so this is all the workshop that Ajahn Tananat prepared for us. So let's get, get back to the concept part. But before we uh talking a bit more about the concept part, do you have any question about all the workshops? Uh, everyone's still good? So far, so good, Naka? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay so now, Naka, let me um point out this one, Naka. Okay, Naka, uh, we're talking about, today we learned a lot of workshops about the technology. So now you have your technological knowledge. So uh, uh, here I would like to address the, the concept of TPAP model. Naha. TPAP model is technological pedagogical content knowledge. So for us as the educator, we believe that uh, once you know the technology, you have to be able to integrate it appropriately with your pedagogical knowledge. Meaning that like what I showed you example earlier, um, the technology will be meaningless if you not apply the appropriate pedagogy. For example, those set of active um, learning pedagogy, like um, like strategy, like think pair share, team pair solo, or active learning, any other type of active learning pedagogies. And then another very important element is the content knowledge. You have to be able to apply the technology and the pedagogy that appropriate to your content. For example, if you teach mathematics, science, English, or any content area, you have to be able to apply the one that are uh, appropriate or match with the content. So all will be blended and come out with the, a very good and effective net teaching and learning model that you know, like represent yourself as, you know, like um uh, in the class. So all the tools that we mentioned are um the tools that 
uh, very popular nowadays. And you can use those two for both uh, your activities and also the assessment in your class. So let me touch a bit about the principle of um, the evaluation or the assessment. As we all know that there are um, the principle of assessment of learning, assessment for learning, and assessment as learning. So these are, uh, if you believe in assessment of learning, meaning that you believe that, okay, in um, to access the effective, effectiveness of your class, you will have the summative evaluation one or two times in a semester. You may have the final um, assess evaluation or the midterm and final. So that is the aim of assessment of learning. So whatever you teach is reach the learning objective. So you measure it at the uh, midterm exam and final exam. But um, with, you know, like um, nowadays, when we start to teach online a lot or the combination like branded learning or hybrid learning, people are more concerned with the formative type of evaluation, meaning that we give it more focus on assessment for learning and assessment as learning. For this assessment for learning and assessment as learning, um, meaning that we give more importance to students to respond in decision maker. Students will, will know um, their ability, will be able to judge their work as on the um, criteria that you provide them. And they will be able to develop their own shared assessment criteria. Thinking about when you have the rubric um, in your class, you use it with your student, student brainstorm, adjust the rubric, the criteria with you. And then learners will know um, their ability. They will be able to sell, regulate, and critically evaluate their own work. So if you believe the formative type of um, evaluation, this will be the way that um, you use it. And another type is assessment for learning meaning that you give feedback to learning and teaching. So both teacher and student will keep continuing give feedback during the teaching dialogue. Uh, for example, is um, the class point program where you know you can have your lecture and then you will have the formative evaluation by adding question, quiz, or like interactive tools during your class to get the feedback from the students. And at the end, you may even ask them to evaluate themselves. So this kind of um, evaluation, we call the formative evaluation, that is go very well with the technology integration and the new trend of, you know, like authentic tasks and assessment. Um, this kind of assessment we call is the low stake kind of assessment because we can access the learners like 360. We not only look at the end, the end point of um, the learner's outcome, but we're looking at the process of learning as well. So um, this one, uh, what I would like to conclude is that um, with the use of, you know, like this new technology is very uh, enhanced the way of the assessment where people give more focus on the formative assessment uh, rather than the summative one, okay? Now, um, today, what, what we teach you is, you know, different kind of programs. But as you all know that, you know, the new programs coming out every day. So um, we would like to teach you not only, you know, to, um, to catch a fish, but we teach you how to fish. So that is one secret of our um, educational technologies. We usually have, you know, the, the place to update with all of these tools. One of the website called C4LPT, this one is um, quite powerful. If you go to this website, top two for learning, This one, uh, this website is hosted by the 
um, the teaching and learning innovation, um, the founder called Jane Hart from uh, England, I would say. And um, in this organization, they send out the survey every year, asking teachers and also trainer, like what kind of tools they use. And then they put it into like top 100 tools for learning, top three tools. And uh, also they put it into like categories like for personal learning, two for the workplace and two for education. Okay, so these are all the tools that are famous around the world. And then uh, the interesting part is here, um, you will see like they put together like 300 tools and then very first column, they will say like when they compare with last year, uh, it's going up or going down. So this one can be as a criteria in you know um choosing the tools. For example, we heard that uh, many people use Canva a lot, and Canva uh going up for a uh, place from last year. This year is number nine, and if you would like to know what kind of Canva, this is. Uh, the brief lesson they call is graphic tools. And if you would like to know more about Canva, you can click on the program. And then you can look through the comments uh, where other people use it and what they feel about this program, what kind of jobs or the work that they use in that class. So this is uh, going to be very, very um, useful. And also, um, for example, if you are uh, using quizzes for a while. So I will type quizzes. Quizzes is number 36 going up one place from last year and they define as the games and testing tools. So if you would like to know like what kind of other similar tools like quizzes, you can maybe type like games and testing tools. And there are also other program called Quizlet, which is defined as game and testing too as well. But this one may not be a good choice because um, now it's in 57 place and it go down three, place, three places, meaning that they may be, you know, like uh, some limitation about this program. So people use it less than last year. So some interesting program is something like, you know, uh, going up 48 places like Netflix or TED Talk going up 42 places. Powtoon like this going up 54 places. Tools like this is, you know, like um, interesting for us or maybe the good choice for us to use is Okay. So, uh, so first you're looking at places going up or down. Second, you're looking at a category, whether it fit to your need. Uh, if you're looking for the game and testing tools, you may go with this one. And then again, you're looking at, you know, the experience from other t-shirts like this. Comments about this program. And then is the link to the official site. Okay. So this is one of the secret plays that, you know, we use a lot to update about the programs. Okay. Mm, another thing I would like, one last thing I would say, like I would like to mention very brief, that um at the beginning of um the talk, I talk about you know there are three major key driver. We focus a lot on technology because today you know like um uh we 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 a uh, topic is a new ten in technology, but the other two key driver is also important. Uh, when we're talking about the content, you have to be able to review really your content. So now today, one of the two that most people use regarding, you know, the content, the learning content is MOOC. And on. So this is uh, one of the article mentioned about how to integrate MOOC in the English course in the branded learning model. So for this branded learning model, this teacher used MOOC as an in, asynchronous in the action part. 
So uh, for, uh, in short, they use the MOOC for learners as a self-learning part. So learner will looking at, we watch MOOC videos, do quiz, uh, join in discussion forum, and uh, learn the supplementary materials. So when students come to face-to-face -face session, they can do synchronous in the action, uh, listen to the brief lecture to recap what they you know, already learned in the MOOC course. They do in-class discussion and group presentation, some of the meaningful activity in the class. So this one is the um, branded learning model where you integrated MOOC in the class. So, um, the growth of MOOC, I would say that actually MOOC is not new. It came out since 2012 until now is like more than 10 years. But it's uh, happened like the number of the users have uh, increased rapidly during the pandemic COVID-19 where, you know, like you uh, more all of you have the online classes. So there are two major types of MOOC platform. Uh, the, the global MOOC platform top three called Coursera, edX, and FutureLearn. So these are the three that at least you have to attend in at least one course of, you know, of these three global platform to upskill reskill yourself. And another type of MOOC we call is the country specific MOOC platform. For example, Thailand, we have Thai MOOC platform. Other countries also have their national platform. For example, Korea have like K MOOC or like um, K MOOC platform. Japan, you have J MOOC platform. So these are uh, the top three platform like Coursera, edX, and FutureLearn, like I mentioned earlier. And these are the number of the learner, like 76 million, 35 million, 15 million. Interesting address I would uh would like to point out about Class Central, which is the uh the, the web portal for MOOC. So this one is going to be um the very good place for the MOOC directory that you can start to search about um the MOOC course for you to 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 upskill skill in your expertise. Um, for MOOC, the feature of MOOC is that MOOC can be provided into the courses or the microcredit or the MOOC's bed degree. The micro-credential meaning that um, you as a worker, uh, if you would like to upskill yourself, you can take maybe 10 to 12 weeks of you know, like a few courses, and then you will receive the certificate. And then you can collect all of these micro credential toward the academic degree, the upper degree level or the um, qualification. And um, so now today around the world, people will take, you know, like um, the micro credential course, MOOC course to upskill reskill in their work. And at the same time, they can also uh, continuing their education. So these are the example of the success stories. Okay. I also, um, another role, you know, in additional to teaching at Jiang Gong University, I also working for the Thai, Thailand Cyber University project where we responsible for Thai MOOC. And just very quick to show you about Thai MOOC concept. Now today we have almost um, 1.6 million learners. Uh, we have been issued up to 1.5 certificated and have more than 500 courses from um, the instructors who are very keen in different expertise in different topics uh, throughout the country because we are the unit under the Ministry of Higher Education. So we invite the university, partner university, more than 120 to co-create the courses. Okay? And the course are in 12 categories. And out of that um, 500 courses, uh, they are in 12 categories. Um, the top three are computer technology, um, business management, and health and medicine are the top three uh, categories and uh, these are all of the networks that helps us to co-develop the courses and we also connect with the international um, MOOC platform of these courses.
Okay. Now, um, the MOOC ecosystem is extending. We will not only provide the courses, but um, the idea is that we're going to extend to the e-testing system and also the credit bank system. Which is, I think, is the future direction of higher education, where learner will have more flexibility. They can learn. They can collect the uh, micro credential, put it in their e profile for the job application. It keep there for a lifetime, and they can transfer some, accumulate some in the credit bank for you know like their future education as well. So, so these are the concepts that. Uh, not only the provide the MOOC courses, but the system is extending to e-testing and credit bank system as well as the e-profile system. And this is uh, the number of learner. This during the pandemic, before the pandemic, there are around 320,000 learners and it's increased like rapidly during the COVID-19. Um, these also support, strongly support with um, you know, there are the regulation with the Ministry of Higher Education just came out the regulation about the credit bank system and credit accumulation that really promote, you know, the use of MOOC um, to widely use and um, more popular because learners can use MOOC as a one uh, sort, of uh, sort of credit to, to for their credit accumulation. Okay. So um, as for you as the um, teachers or student who would like to upskill your skill, I would recommend you um, the website called Class Central. This is um, the, I would say it's the MOOC directory. So let's try to have some experience with this Class Central. I will spend maybe um, five to ten minutes to introduce you to this one. So if you go to Class Central, okay, this is like Google for MOOC or the MOOC cost directory. They are partner with you know like um top um universities over a thousand universities, MOOC provider up to 80 provider, including Thai MOOC, we also partner with them and more than thousand institutes, both private and public up, uh, public institutes. They sharing um, the cost metadata with this class central, meaning that for example, if you looking, you can search by subject or university or even looking at the popular courses. Example, I am in the field of education. Um, I would like to find like education course. So here, if I put the word education, they're showing like uh, more than 7,000 courses. Um, let me narrow down a bit. This is <laughs> too broad. <Let> me... <laughs> Educational technology. Now, oh, it's even more, but anyway. So for example, if you want to, you know, upskill, reskill yourself about educational technology, you can looking at the name of the course, for example, this one, Design and Development of Educational Technology, uh, one review, five star. So that's also, but you can see like here, they will show you like, the prime, uh, the MOOC provider. This is at egg provider, six to uh four to six hour week and nine week long is self paced learning and is free of course audit, meaning that you can take this course. But if you would like to get a certificate, you have to pay. But if you don't care about certificate, you would like to get just the knowledge. You can attend it for free. Okay, so you can if you're interested in this course, you can click on this one. And um, you can, you know, like look at the review overview of the course and write the review, even write the review. And this is all the detail. And if you decide to take this one, you can click go to class and then you will leave class central and automatically redirect to edX platform, MOOC platform. 
<laughs> and this cost is not existing. So this may not be a good choice. So let me find other cost. Okay, my favorite, all time favorite course, uh, learning how to learn. This is the best course ever. Learning how to learn. This one, this one, uh, belong to Coursera. So see, this is the um the the icon showing like this is all time favorite courses, um twenty three k review, and more than one hundred fifty six k, uh learn learn this course. So if you look through, and you see some of what the preview of the course, figure something out. And you feel that, yeah, this is very interesting. You can click on go to class. And then if you leave, leave in class central, redirect to Coursera. And you can look for the detail of this course. Okay. Three, more than 3 million already enrolled in this course. And I'm one of them <laughs> and still learning. Haven't completed yet. So, so this is example. And I think it's worth knowing about this MOOC because you can always use this to upskill, reskill yourself regarding, you know, the content expertise in your area, okay? So the last thing I would like to mention is about once you are equipped with the new technology, you'll be able to upskill, reskill about your content. Another aspect, last very important, and one, the people is the God mindset. I think you all have it because I can see like all the comments in Padlet and you really show that you have gone to, you know, like those free zone to the learning zone and growth zone. Because if we're looking at, you know, like the keyword, I see that, um, you know, like, um, in, you know, according to your affection in Padlet, you're talking about, yeah, you will try this in your class. You will practice it. It may take some time and effort, but you will do it, okay? You don't care about the mistake because you believe mistake help you learn. And you will need to try different strategy. So this really represents that you are all have the growth mindset already, which uh, I think this is very, very important one to um, as one of the key driver for you all to to become the global citizen and live happily. I mean, live very happy in, you know, this uncertain um, next normal kind of learning. Okay. So um, one last thing I remember, like um, according to the question set that, uh, Ajahn sent to me about, you know, all of the question from the participants. Uh, one of the question asking about the direction of Jilang Kong University. So I add this slide uh, for you to share with you about um, our university mission. So Jilang Kong University mission, we believe that um, we give emphasis on impactful research and innovation and sustainability. So uh, for me, I work at the university. Of course, my job is, you know, like teaching, doing research. And another thing recently I have to add it to my duty is to create the innovation. So um, during the past five year, um, all of my research, I will not only do the publication, but, um, I also have to further um, develop, you know, like the, those research, make it into the innovation and join in many innovation competition, you know, like very, uh, um, you know, like uh, both international and national level. I have to join in any teaching for the project and, you know, like uh, try new experience. So Zhang Kong University focused that uh, with the experience from instructor, you know, to join in research and uh, innovation competition, we can uh, share this experience to our students, our uh, graduate student, undergraduate student, 
uh, all of the innovation we introduced to our undergrad class, they have experience in all of the innovation. They got some new idea, fresh idea. And uh, since I teaching in the School of Education, so these student, undergrad student get this new fresh idea and uh, apply it when they do the teaching practicum for the K-12 level. So this, how can we drive the, you know, like the innovation drive in society to make it really happen? Um, another aspect of Zhuanggong University is to collaborate academy as me as the uh, instructor. Con they try to find June and find a connection with the industry sector for us. For example, like some of my projects, uh, when I receive the award, like gold award or silver award, they will matching us with the a private organization. In this case, um, you know, I did the chatbot for teaching English teaching. So they match up with the Microsoft company and also another a company that very keen in chatbot technology. And then we co-develop the innovation that is very scalable, scalability to the very um um for the the, the business sector. And they also ask us to attend in different kind of workshop, like doing the business model canvas, how to do the powerful pitching, that kind of things. So these are some of the example of um, how uh, we have the scalable, our chatbot. So one of the chatbot called Molly, this is my innovation that, um, you know, is the research base and receive the award when we co-create with the Microsoft company and the, um, the company that were keen in chatbot technology, we integrate this chatbot into the Microsoft team as the plug-in and start to, you know, like go for the business sector um, to see how it works. So this is how the academy meet the industry. And this is uh, the, the idea of the Zhuanggong University that, you know, like um, really make the research into the innovation and go to the business sector. Okay, so uh, that would conclude our presentation for today. Um, hope we answer all of your queries that you send us. And we still have some time if you have further questions. You still okay? Doing good? Okay. Any question, please? <laughs> we have 12 more minutes. <laughs> uh, if it's not a question, you can share thoughts and idea, um, you know, like, you know, whatever you would like to share, Hazan. Please feel free to share, to share huh? <laughs> Kuncha, anything? Dr. Matt, anything? Uh, we got the, the question from the particip one participant. Uh, uh, it's about the, what is your opinion about on the relationship between the development of AI and human brain development? such as like thinking or decision-making and analysis skills. Um, we would like to know about the opinion of yours. Thank you, Ka. You mean um, how smart AI is or um, in, in what aspect of AI? Can, can, can you repeat like the question again? They would like to, you, like in you know, the opinion of to compare about the AI and the AI and a human brain, which, uh, mm. which is like, what is your opinion on the relationship between the development of the AI mm. between the uh, human brain development, mm. something like that? So um, for us as the educator, we believe that, um, you know, AI is, the, the thing that we really develop, 
the human develop AI, right? So we try to make AI think like us, okay? So um, AI can help us in, um, you know, the routine job. They doing good because they, uh, you know, like on track all the time. For example, if we use AI in the good and um, productive way, like, you know, uh, in my case, I... I use chatbot, AI chatbot to help me as a question, uh, the routine question for my students. That is good because we don't have to keep repeating the same thing. But what AI can do is um, to teach learners soft skill, you know, that kind of things that um, really the teacher have to, to, to share that with the learners, I would say. So AI smart, but in some way, you can use AI to complement your teaching and learning, but AI will not replace the teacher. I, I'm not sure if I if I answer the question, but but that what what we all believe. So, ha. Huh. Um, can I ask a question? Yes, please, cut. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, only because Dr. Natra. Uh, urged me to uh, and I do have a few actually um our our program uh, or at least the one that I'm in <clears throat> is about uh, educational leadership as well and um, I know that there's a lot of really exciting and and uh, neat tools out there and so I think I think the tools for education are developing at a very rapid rate um, and I know that our students are exploring and using and, and taking them on board at a very accelerated rate. Uh, but schools and educators, especially ones that have been around like myself for a while, um, sometimes it's difficult to adapt that quickly, right? I mean, we, we're putting courses together six, eight months in advance um, and stuff changes, right, by then. And so <clears throat> I think, I think myself and my colleagues have difficulty uh, knowing what to adopt, what to embrace, uh, what to inform our new way of teaching, uh, because it's just changing so fast, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so part of my question is, is about leadership, right? As, as either leaders in a higher ed, uh, institution or <clears throat> in a K-12 school, um, do, you get, do you get behind the tools or do you kind of get behind the mentality and then let people adapt and adopt what they want? Mm, okay. You're looking at the, the, the perspective from the leadership, right? In the school, yes. how, how to fine tune about this <laughs> rapid change of technology and... Yes. Um, the, I would say the teacher workload because they already have the, you know, a lot of work to do regarding the teaching. And if they have to keeping up with all the technology that that's going to be put them very hard, you know, to have a very hard time, that kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that that's a very good point. And I think to fight June is like, um, I always believe that, you know, like, the very experienced teacher who use te less technology, but they always good at the experience. They can share mm -hmm. good experience with their student, but in their class, they may use less technology. But you know, the, the strength of them is, you know, they, they have a lot of experience. They teach very well, but maybe less technology. But uh, on the other hand, like young teacher, they may not teaching very good because of less experience. But if they, they they are so good at keeping up with the new technology, so that is one way that they can uh, engage the learners. So mm -hmm. I think that are the combination of, you know, different type of teacher. And I think that beautiful, you know, of, you know, one school environment that have different kind of um, teachers that keen in different things. Like some may heavily use technology, some may use less technology, but they are so experienced and teaching so good. So I think like, let it like, I mean, like I, I, I conclude in my presentation that as long as you have the growth mindset, 
you you accept the new technology, but it doesn't mean that you have to use everything. You know it's existing there, but you may apply it as the appropriate portion or amount that fit to your teaching style or um with your student teaching content and everything. Like you know, um, using myself as a case study, you know, like uh, when I was very young junior teacher, I used a lot of technology, but now I use less. But with my experience and other things, you know, like I still keep up on the technology, but may not use as much as other youngster and that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I think that that would be like there is no one one uh one model of teaching with technology. But it depends on, you know, like each person to feel like this is the best of them, I would right. say. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Ajahn, yeah, I have a question. Sorry well, to interrupt you. Um, Ajahn, I, uh, I teach ethics. And huh. one of the um, topics we... we we were talking about uh, the other day is uh, ethics and the use of technology in education. So uh, in your opinion, and I know there are many issues uh, uh, related to ethics, but in your opinion, what is, what is the most uh, pressing or urgent uh, issue related to ethics and technology and teaching? I would say is the AI, <laughs> the generative <laughs> AI. <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, is what you know? Like we keep debating every day about this generative AI, and that's why Ajantana not um showing you know like how uh the human try to create a program that detect the generative AI in the you know in the essay job and that kind of thing. So I think like um yeah, I I think uh how we use the technology to to support our work our teaching and learning is the 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 most challenging well you know like man i i i'm very impressive with you know what you put in the uh, padlet about your opinion about you know the the chat gpt like many of you said that yeah it's like your learning body or it's like you know your peer one of your peer that uh, help you um you know like think about you know the the essay concept or you know like second opinion that kind of thing so i i like the way that you think that you use it to complement your work but not try to um find the mistake or you know the problematic of them you know? so I, I think that will be the, the most challenging for us yeah and i think it will happen more and more with the ai you know it's smarter and <laughs> every day. <laughs> do you have any question? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Ajan, I have a question about the Padlets. Uh, you know, uh, very happy that I learned a lot of uh, new technology that I may use as a teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, a Padlet uh, we use in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, my question is, now that uh, we have cyber bullying in terms of uh, using uh, those uh, yeah. platform in the classroom. So how can we as a teacher when we introduce those platform especially Padlet. So how can we, can we prevent uh, cyberbullying when using the application in the class? Yeah, that's a that's very you. good question. So you mean like uh, some, because the Padlet learners can share their opinion, like just anything and that is may related to the cyberbullying. So that's a very good point. So let me share my screen a bit and I show you this um, feature of the Padlet. I think Padlet got the feedback about cyberbullying a lot. So they start to have this one. If you go to edit the modify, they have this um, option require approval. If you have this on, you can require a moderator to approve. So all of the message that learners 
going to post on that Padlet will not automatically show, but you have to click on the approve first. So if it's not, you know, like related to bullying, you can, you know, uh, put the approve and then everyone can see it. But if you think like this is not appropriate, you just don't click it. So you will not approve it. So student will know that, okay, this one not approved. So they have to, you know, redo it, you know, that kind of thing. So I think that that will help and student will learn because I think sometimes when students bullying each other, they don't know this is bullying, right? So uh, I think this is one way that um, you can teach them. They can learn from this. Try it. Yeah. It's required approval mode. And also have the um, this one filter profanity, this one as well. So this kind of thing, I think you can use it. Yeah. <laughs> As in Daniel, you teaching in the K to twelve um in Thailand or somewhere else? Uh, in Thailand. Huh? In what grade, Kajan? Uh, K to twelve. K twelve. Yeah, cyberbullying be the big issue. <laughs> Anyone um, I have a question about something you mentioned earlier. You mentioned that um, you used to use technology a lot in your classes and then you decided to use less. Mm -hmm. May I know why you decided to use less technology now than before? <laughs> because I'm getting old, so I'm slower. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> you know, when you like, you know, in your early 30, you are so, you know, like eager to learn the new technology and you explore everything, you're so happy. But the more you're getting older, the less technology you, I, I still use it, but maybe not as variety as, you know, before, but I still use it. But, you know, as the, you know, like um, we get older, we have more experience to share with the learners. And maybe with the courses I teach, a uh, graduate student course, I may not need a lot uh, of the technology to get the attention from the student because they would like to hear my experience more than other things. When comparing with, you know, teaching like undergrad students or K-12, we need to gain them attention with, you know, all of this technology. So I think it depends on, you know, like the context that, you know, you are in at what time. Yeah, but the most importantly, when you're getting older, <laughs> you're slower in everything. <laughs> Uh, to be honest. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for asking Kaj and Farah. <laughs> so Ajahn, I also have um, a question. So in rural areas, they are still tr uh, having troubles to assess the internet plus the facility and infrastructure itself. So if we are to push on digital technology in education, what kind of a possible inequality or equal access to education can happen? And how can, as an educator and as administrators, how can we prevent that from happening? Do you mean the um, internet connection? And also some students, uh, they may not have enough facilities or facilities. tools or devices, yes. Okay. Um, if you remember, like Ajahn Tana not show you during the workshop, uh, there are many options uh, on every tools. Usually they have options. If you cannot do like one-on-one -on -one because, you know, like your student may not all of them have one-on-one -on -one technology, you may um, do it as a group. It's even more fun, you know, to do it as a group. So you may, you know, like use the strategy like, okay, let's get into the group uh, who has the smartphone and then let's get into the group uh, with, you know, the, the, the student with have the smartphone. Or you may use the, the option that the print out option. Recently, you know, many programs offer you that option. Like if you don't have the, really the technology, you can print it out. And uh, you only need one device uh, from the instructor to use this in the class and either you print it out and you know they still can have those interactive activity in the class yeah. thank you <laughs> you're very welcome 
Good evening, Kappa Chan. May I ask a question? Yes. Uh, that Chan, you mentioned about a one on one, right? So, I think now today, train off the equipped one on one uh, device to university and college, where it uh, provides uh, spreadly. So, I would like to ask about uh, do you think if the uni university decide to uh, decide to equipped one on one and not provide one on one do you think which one is more uh, uh profitable with the student mm, you mean at the higher education the university uh, level and and college and uh, some uh, international school as well yeah. ah okay um Recently, um, the, at the university level, I, I go with this one first. We believe on uh, the concept of bring your own device, BYOD. So um, usually all the students, almost 100% have their own smartphone. So what we have to consider as the administrative or, you know, like um, looking from the administrative side is that uh, whenever what the technology you uh, offer to them, uh, it needs to be compatible with their devices. So um, if they have, you know, the, the older version of the smartphone or the uh, notebook, laptop or the tablet, all of the content and the activity need to be compatible with, you know, like that equipment. And uh, I think like more the university concerned with the yeah. internet connection and those kind of supportive, you know, like technology, not the major device. The major device we let the student use their own, so I think it's the same concept with the international um student the school that I believe that you know they 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 let the student have the their own device right. Mm, what what about as an uh, educator when they prepare a uh, student to use technology? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what is struggle between um. Uh, device a different device and a different platform. Do you think this is the uh, effect with the educator now today? Uh, probably, but um, with this recent technology, usually it are uh, compatible in most uh platform. They they try to make it like um the the most user friendly as it can be. If you know about the term like um responsive web, you know, like um the website now today, you can see that it's adjusted to fit like you know any device um screen, you know, that the concept mm -hmm. of responsive um technology. So the technology now today it will be responsive uh, and compatible with most of the devices. So those questions will have less and less with the new trend of technology. So, so no, this no. means the uh, educator prepare with the web best is the best way the best for way. the educator now today. Okay. So okay. if it's the web application, is the um you know uh you will no longer have to worry about whether it's the iOS or you know it's Android as long as it's the web based and responsive. Yeah, that's 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 good conclusion. And I think like. Actually, many students doesn't like to, you know, to download the application. I mean, mm -hmm. iOS application. They prefer web based because they don't use, you know, like they don't have to use the, you know, the that smartphone like space. So it's just, you know, the web link, so that kind of thing. So okay. Thank you, Kam. You're welcome, Kajan. Thank you, Ajahn. Thank you everyone for active participation. So um now it's a little bit over 9 p.m. So we'll like to proceed uh, for the closing. And now I'd like to welcome our pro program director of educational administration and leadership, Dr. Pompilas Asavisanu, to deliver the thank you speech. Okay, thank you. So formal. <laughs> okay, so um, it's my honor to deliver the closing speech. So on behalf of the Dean and the Graduate School of Human Sciences uh, at Assumption University, our faculty members and all of our students, I would like to take um, this moment to express our sincere appreciation to Professor Jin Tawi Klai Sang, 
and Associate Professor uh, Tanat Nat Chatra Pakalat, sorry, my time. <laughs> Uh, for an outstanding presentation related to educational technology. Um, both your expertise in the topic really, really uh, shone through and made this session very informative. And interesting. I think uh, as educators, this uh, webinar has really given us uh, food for thought and hopefully uh, the motivation to be more proactive in, in incorporating technology into our uh, teaching. So once again, uh, thank you to both, uh, John. Thank you, Ka. Thank you very much to Ka. Thank you very much, Ka. Thank you, Ka. Have a great night, Ka. Yes. So just before we close, um, we would like to have um, two requests. The first one is I would like to share a QR so that we can have um, an I uh, ideas on how to um, ev the evaluation form link. We will be sharing via email uh, later uh, to the registration. Um, please kind, uh, kindly uh, submit that as soon as possible uh, so that it can help us um, improve for upcoming webinars as well. And uh, the last one is for the photo session. And let's take a quick um, photo short session since we, this is a virtual one. And I would like to invite my creative team to facilitate for the photo um, session. Bambad? Okay, guys. So, so just uh, I will do very turn on your videos, perhaps. A video? You no, know, to all. The, the participants who still haven't um, changed their background is it's okay, but please turn on your camera so that we can have a screen short properly. Thank you. Yes, everyone. Please, uh, I will make sure everyone's camera is on. One second, please. Okay, thank you for your cooperation. I will take a quick screenshot for you now. One, two, three. Okay. Is it okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank oh. you. I got it. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much for joining us tonight and thank you for your active participation and um, hope to uh, see you in upcoming webinars and hope to grow together and learn together. Thank you so much, Ajahn, and everyone else. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.